one out of every seven persons is Catholic. Yet, it is still one of the most unpopular institutions in the world, especially in communities of millennials and Generation Z kids who are becoming more liberal by the day. Today on Catholic Faith Forum, we will be looking at the challenges of being a Catholic among young people with a special focus on university campuses. When we come back from this short break, we'll be meeting our guests who will be sharing their experiences with us. Stay with us, don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show, I'm still Chima and today we're talking about the challenges of being Catholic in university campuses. I have two guests with me in the studio who are going to share their experiences with us on this topic. First, I have Marvelous Mary Ogunobo, a 200 level philosophy student from the University of Ibadan and I have Yoande Shewu, a BSc holder of mass communication from the University of Lagos. You're both welcome. Yeah, thank you. thank you for joining us on the show. You look very lovely today. <laughs> All right, so um, we're here to share experiences about how it has been so far for you, Marvelous, and how it was for you here one day being a Catholic on campus. So um, you're both Catholic. So how long have you been Catholic? Yeah, I've been Catholic since birth. Mm, interesting. I was baptized about three months old. So I've been Catholic. Till how now. do you remember your <laughs> baptism? Day? We have a baptismal card, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've been Catholic since birth? Yes, yeah, since birth. Interesting, and I hope you're practicing. Yeah, you're up to date with all the sacraments and everything. Yes, sir. okay, beautiful. So, um, you've been in the university, why have you stayed as Catholics for this long, especially in this age where there's so much information to process? You and well, I feel like being in Catholic church is like the only place to be because if you go out there, you see that, like, for me. And as an example, if I go to any other church, I don't feel that that peace and happiness I feel when I'm in the Catholic church. And then I don't even count it like I've gone to a church. So basically, that's my only reason why I've stayed this long. Okay, marvelous. Yeah, being a Catholic up till now is something that I've come to stay with because I think I've read about other religions and not just denominations. And I feel the Catholic Church still has it all, still has the faculty of salvation in it. Mm. It, ha it can take all temperaments. If I want to go it like dance, I want to shout, you have a space for that. If I want it solemn, I have a space for that. If I want a quiet time, I can find everything. I just, it is complete. So you don't have that completeness in every, in any other denomination or even any other religion. So they're kind of not accommodative to every kind of person. Okay, marvelous. You mentioned that um, the Catholic Church can accommodate all temperaments. So what is your favorite thing about being a Catholic? Yeah, being a Catholic, my favorite thing is the benediction. Mm. Where you have the Psalms chanted, like during the solemn Vespers. I've had that a couple of times. And then my favorite thing makes me very happy. What exactly about it makes it your favorite? Mm, the Psalms, the solemnness. It's called the Solemn Vespers, mm -hmm. so usually in the evening, uh, you find it often in the seminaries and then maybe religious houses where it is done, usually Sunday evening. So yeah. the solemnity of the whole yes, season, uh, yes, yes. Actually, you feel. can taste heaven there. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right, you and the, um, what's your favorite thing about being a Catholic? Well, my favorite thing about being a Catholic is the Mass. Mm. Like, the peace the Mass gives me is, I've not found it any other place. There's this peace and happiness I feel whenever I'm at mass. Even if there are some days I feel very weak that I don't feel like I'm going any other place, but mass, I must attend mass because I don't live the same way I came. So for me, the mass itself is my favorite. I love that. Okay, um, being university students or being an ex-university student in your case, um, you've seen a lot of ideologies, you've seen a lot of religions because university is a big melting pot of all of this. How were you able to practice your faith here one day in such a, an environment? Well, starting with, I joined the Legion of Mary, so which helped me to also keep in check 
Because there were times that I felt like I was drifting apart from the church, and then I had NFCS, Nigeria Federation of Catholic Students. So through fellowships and every other thing, every activity, I was able to stay in check. So I wasn't so bothered about what any other church was doing, because almost my whole week was booked. I knew on Monday I had me John Tuesday NFCS fellowship. All these were after classes. I yeah, all these were in the evening after mass. So oh. my week was too booked for me to even think of any other church. Wonderful. How about you, Marvelous? How has it been so far? Yeah, I try to frequent masses, although it's not easy. But I like the way I, it is in my school. You have midday masses and you have evening masses, although change. they are mixed. They are not just every day. But then I try to find myself and arrange my schedule a day, a day of the week to fit into it. I try to go for masses. I try to see my rosary early in the morning so that even if I'm not able to go for mass, I think that one goes in. And then we have room for benedictions and vespers, mm. the one I spoke to you about earlier. We have it there too. So I can, I, I, can, I can tell that you're always the happiest person in your school because yeah. this happens frequently. Yeah, yeah. Okay, vespers. so um, in your schools now, what is the general perception about Catholicism? Mm. Yeah, my school, you know, my sc- the Catholic church in my school is very beautiful. Mm. We have flowers, fine structures. So the first idea is, is the church people come to show their clothes, people come to snap pictures, people to come to show affluence because I believe that church is the should be the biggest church in, in your school. My school. Mm. So the normal the first idea that comes to people's mind is show off. It's just a church where people go to show off, you know, Catholics they don't pray. So they just go there to show off and then snap pictures and then clothe them. So like, that's the perception. That's the perception of Catholics. <laughs> wow. Okay, what about you? Well, I can quite agree to an extent because other non Catholics they feel like, oh, the Catholic Church doesn't have strict rules on dressing. You see a Catholic going to church without a scarf, they feel like, no, it's a must. So they feel like it's a place where you just go up to show your clothes, show yourself, and then just come back without really doing anything relating to God or prayer. Hmm. So, are this challenge, are this, some of these things you mentioned now, are these challenges in your practice of in the practice of your faith in school? Yes. How? Well, for example, when I was in the hostel, there was the day I left the hostel without my scarf and then my roommate was like, how can you go to church without scarf? And I'm like, oh, is it the scarf that will determine what is in my heart? But they don't, they don't want to understand that, oh, it's not about how you dress, even though how you dress has a part to play, but then what's the point of me dressing all holy and then I'm a... I'm not a saint inside. Nobody's a saint. So they most of them believe that oh it's how you dress that will tell how you are. Basically. Okay, so what are some of the other challenges that you um, face in practicing your faith in your school? Marvelous. Yeah, I would like to group my challenges into three categories: the social, intellectual, and then the spiritual. Mm. You know, in that environment where you are all free, you don't have the monitoring of your parents. Under the social aspect, you are battling between being social and then being spiritual or religious. Understand? Where you go out, you mingle with people, you are free, you can do anything you want to do. But then you still have to put it, let me not say at the back of your mind, at the front of your mind, that I have a Christianity, I have a Catholic faith that I must hold on to. So you tend to have this crisis, like a challenge, trying to balance being social and then being a Catholic intellectually you have to struggle between being um up with your studies and then you know the university presents you with a schedule that makes you feel you don't have time for god mm-hmm. you only have time for books and then i try to socialize and mm, it always gives the excuse that no not god not god now not god now not church now so intellectually you have to battle between facing your academics squarely and then being up to date with church nfcs and then mass and then other activities and then spiritually you also have to battle temptations you know being a catholic you are supposed to be up to date with sacraments and then you're in an environment that promotes sin kind of where you are free to do whatever you want to do so so these challenges are there and we, we so someone. from where does the biggest challenge now stem from does it stem from um, being catholic or from outside mm, the biggest challenge should stem from being Catholic and trying to stay being Catholic in the campus. Interesting. Why it's do you not, have that take? It's not easy. You know, as a youth, you like to do things, not really outside the Catholic way, but then things in the whole, in the campus will be 
all these Protestant churches try to advertise their churches and make it. You find it in my school where they say item seven, highly guaranteed stuff like that. Mm. So you don't find that in the Catholic Church. We don't advertise. So they try to make things maybe beautiful. They bring incentives for you so that you try to shift from being Catholic. So that's right. really um, the story. I would like you to hold that thought as we are about to go and take some views from the street. When we come back from the streets, we'll be going back into the discussion with our guests. Stay with us, don't go anywhere. You are watching Catholic Faith Forum on TV and we are on the street of Lagos to get responses for our topic. Please join me. I'm sure you've not forgotten my name, Judith. I was spiritual by good fortune. Fortunately for me, I was the coordinator of the Parish Youth Fellowship in my local parish. So I was very, very spiritual because it was my responsibility to give the reflection, summarize the reflection every Sunday. I always love to practice what I preach. So because of that, I, it kind of helped me to keep myself in check living according to the dictates of what I preach Sunday in, Sunday out. I would say more or less spiritual, because I think I'm so spiritual. I'll just say I was more active, because you were like a student, there were so many organizations to be in, but now, because you're balancing it with work and every other thing, so it's more streamlined for me. So probably I'm just in one organization now, where in uni I was more like three, four. So it's just about the time and not more about the spirituality. I'll say in my university days that I was more spiritual than now, of course. Because of work and all Work, distractions here and there. Welcome back to Catholic Faith Forum with me, Chima, and we've been discussing with Yowande and Marvelous Mary the challenges of being a Catholic on university campuses. Before the short break, Marvelous was telling us about um, where the, cat, um, the biggest challenge stems from. So um, you said that being a Catholic and staying a Catholic is where the biggest challenge stems from. Why is that? Yeah, like I said earlier, the university where I school, you have all these other mushroom churches mm. trying to lure Catholics into their own movements with incentives and then they present things that are appealing to the youth that you don't necessarily find in the Catholic Church. They sometimes have to go by even cooking food to share on Sunday and advertise it and make it so that you can just actually come there and fellowship with them and then or be a member. They have the count numbers and they see numbers as growth. But you don't find that in the Catholic Church. So this is one of the, uh, this should be the major challenge that every Catholic faces in my university. Trying to remain where you are, where things are not necessarily as um, let me say, flowery as they appear in the other churches. Even though if you know what you want and what you are doing, you will continue to appreciate it. And you know, in that, in those other places or other denominations, you have the opportunity of ascending to the leadership position there. So they also lure you with that. That don't worry, you can be a pastor in our church. Just you can be the lead singer. You can be all these. But you know, in the church, you cannot just from a, be a student and then become a priest or be the head of. So they continue to lure. So the greatest challenge of being a, a Catholic on campus is remaining a Catholic still on campus when your parents are not watching. You. Wonderful. All right, Yowande, so tell us now, um, do you think that the actions of fellow Catholics contribute to the challenges that Catholics face on campus? Yeah, yes. Yes, I think. Why? Because you say, okay, some Catholics, some, they say they don't do what they preach. They are preaching one thing, they are doing another thing. For example, you can't tell someone that, oh, it's not good to go to club and it's not good to do this and that if you yourself every friday are out they'll see you like someone that doesn't know what he or she is saying so you should at least preach what you do or do what you preach let your your actions and your words match don't do one thing and then see another thing because they'll believe that oh this is not this person that said i shouldn't do this but the person is the first person to do this so sometimes we don't know that indirectly or directly people are watching us they want to be like us, but then they can't be like us. And then when they can't be like us, they try to discourage us. Mm. So what what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I think that's 
the truth that Catholics, some Catholics actually contribute to this. You know, I was talking about the misinterpretation of mm. Catholics, uh, who, we, who we Catholics are in my university. Mm. Now, it is actually a fact that so many Catholics come to church on Sunday only to take pictures. So they actually give credit to that assumption that we Catholics are just lukewarm people. If you check the the average of those who come for daily masses and then how ch- big and how full the church is on Sunday on during student masses, you see that, yeah, there's actually a huge number of about 80% of lukewarm Catholics. So if, you know, we don't actually promote this, um, uh, the false type of Christianity, we must do this, we must do that, like the Catholic Church is open, serve God the way we want to serve Him. But then, in the other churches, you don't necessarily have that. So this is actually a challenge. This lukewarmness in other Catholics is a challenge. It must not be verbal. Sometimes it's even verbal. Let's go for Mass on Sunday. Well, I'm not going. I'll go for the Mass. And then you come back in the evening, you are in the hostel and you're playing PS with the same person. So this challenge is not verbal. Sometimes verbal is also a challenge to being a Catholic on campus. Okay, um, what do you have to say about um, the actions of the chaplains and um, the church in general towards this um, situation? Yeah. They are doing well, I must confess. Yeah, we have the... They are very close to us, like the the Dominicans, yeah, they come for NFCS meetings all the time. They say masses for us whenever they are available. I don't see them all the time. So that's all the time. But then, I think the church can do more. The church can actually kill some of these incentives that other churches present to Catholics, like scholarships. I don't know if there is any, but then, the church can sponsor one or two beginning of every year, or maybe a, a student that has the best grade in each department. I think the church maybe can do that to give maybe a stipend for that for the coming year. I think students will still love being Catholics. And then if the church can also promote things that are that um, catch the attention of youth, like maybe um, leagues, football leagues, football leagues. Maybe you can bring someone that knows music to teach people how to do, how to play musical instruments. Some of these things are actually what can take a Catholic out of the Catholic Church on the university campus. Hmm, interesting. All right, here one day. So, what will you tell other Catholics as regards their behavior so that these challenges can reduce for them? Oh well, I would say do what you preach and preach what you do hmm. because you don't know who is looking at you. There might be someone there who has just been following your behavior and oh. This person goes to church every day. Let me try and be like the person. And then the day you don't go, the person is discouraged. But you, you don't know somebody who has been looking at you. Just like, oh, I don't want to go to church today. You don't know that your action that singular day has discouraged someone who was trying to be like you. So because your actions, um, your because you decide not to go to church today, it means that you are, you are somehow telling the next person not to go to church. But people have freedom of choice. Yes, people have freedom of choice, but then not everybody knows what they want. Mm. And that's why it's good sometimes to have a role model. Someone you look up to, you don't even have to, the person doesn't have to know that the person is inspiring you. For example, when I was in the hostel, there was this particular girl, I didn't even know that she would wait for me to come out and go for math and then she would just come at my back. Until one day I didn't go and then she was the one that came to call me that why didn't you go for math today? If she hadn't come, I wouldn't have known that, oh, there was someone that I was reminding. So that's just how it is. It's not like choice. It's more like, okay, you're just reminding the person. Okay, thank you so much for sharing with us. It has been very interesting talking to you about this topic. Thank you, Marvelous. Thank you, Yohande, for coming on the show. Okay. All right, the conversation continues on our social media platforms at CFF on TV on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Send us your comments, send us your experiences on this topic. Also, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with new episodes of the show. But before we go, we have Judith and Collins with a bit of info on the Know Your Faith series. Welcome to Know Your Faith series. I am Collins. And I am Judith. Today, we talk about a topic that has been on my mind for quite some time, and probably even yours. So don't you ever wonder why the priests and religious never actually get married? Because they don't have to. I know, but I like need the reason why. Okay, one is God wants them to fulfill their ministry better. He wants them to give full attention to building the kingdom of God. Like you know, they are, they are the bride of Christ. 
Oh, okay. Okay, well, that, that makes sense now. But like, according to the scriptures, there is no place that says that Christ, that Christ actually got married. But in a mystical sense, Christ is married to the church. Okay. And so by being celibate and devoting themselves to the service of the church, they model themselves and consecrate themselves to Christ. According to Matthew chapter 22, 30, they are already living the life we are hoped to live. In renouncing marriage, they offer the best gifts to God. I read once in Revelation 14, 4, the, where it talked about the saving of the 144,000 people and having a special spot mm -hmm. for the Virgin. And so I would say that our religious and priests are already modeling themselves and creating a path for salvation for them. Yeah, that's why we have to imitate the kind of life we need. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining us. Till next time. Be bold. Be Catholic. Be That was Judith and Collins with the info on Know Your Feet. I hope you learned something from that. Until we come your way next time with another exciting episode, keep being saints in jeans and shirts. <laughs>